Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with the Battle of Leipzig uh, which is famously known for having the British Army there. Yes, today we have uh, just a custom battle but it is at Leipzig. Today we do actually have two British armies there, not just one but two uh, armies that are not supposed to be here. In history the British did send some Congreve rockets but today they've decided to send two entire armies to support the Prussians and the Russians and they are facing four French armies in today's Napoleon Total War. Three battle and I hope you guys are looking forward to this one I've been told it's a very very good one and it'll be certainly interesting to see how this one goes down I believe this uh, this is in 9.1 uh, is this replay so Britain has had a little bit of a nerf so they should be able to take on France and actually kind of have a bit of a challenge again um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do and obviously we have uh, we have UK Spain 1808 and we have UK Espana Portugal uh, 1809. So we have two different, uh, we have like a 10 pointer there and we have an 8 pointer here. So I mean, some pretty strong British armies here. We also have uh, Prussia, which is just 1806. It's like the old, like revolu revolutionary sort of like style looking uh, Prussia. Still like they're fighting for Frederick the Great at the moment, um, but they will soon be changing. It looks like we're about to see uh, some like Hussars here get charged by, well, it looks like some more Hussars of. Uh, of France. No, some dragoons, in fact. So they're just gonna take these guys out. I mean, not a bad idea. We've got like just some little like Saxon Hussar units here that are just like ready for the taking. But these guys have run a long way. These uh, like this cavalry here ran quite a way to come get these. So they're gonna be pretty tired, I would have thought. They should still break this uh, cavalry unit. They are massively outnumbered. They'll break that one, they'll come and get the other one. And I presume these Hussar units are just to try and scout out the, the French army, really. No other point to them. And yes, the final uh, allied army we have here today is 1812 Russia. So uh, obviously we can see all the allied units, but we can't see what the French units consist of. Um, I can see that one of them is like a Prussian campaign, uh, like France up there, and the other ones I'm not really sure about because they just got basic French, uh, basic French colours. But um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes down. It already looks like we're going to see uh, the Prussian French army sort of go off against uh, like UK Spain 1808. And then, well, the rest of the uh, French armies look like they're going to be taking on either Britain, Prussia, or Russia. But yeah, it will certainly be an interesting one. It's nice to see Leipzig as a map. Uh, this is, I can't remember which part of it. This looks like it's um, Leipzig North, by the looks of it. I think in Mockern's here. I can't entirely remember. I think it might be. I might be also wrong. It's been a little while since I've studied the map of Leipzig. But it's, uh, I believe Leipzig's got two different maps. Uh, on it, so that will be uh, really interesting to see when we do some scenario battles for Leipzig, and uh, we'll see like two different perspectives of the battle going on. It'd be quite interesting to maybe like merge the two together, kind of having, like simultaneously going on. Um, I don't know how we quite do that, but we could try and do that. That'd be quite interesting. But we've got some uh, just looks like some Prussian infantry here, just sort of s sniping away at the, uh, the British lines. So I don't have a clue what this unit is. I mean, it looks like it's like a militia unit of some sort. Maybe like Swiss militia or some sort. Nah, it's not militia then. It's line infantry. Yeah, it looks like some Swiss line or something like that. Uh, setting up. And we've got some big units back here. I mean, look at this grenadier, uh, grenadier of the line unit back here. It looks amazing. It really does. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of French now setting up over here. We've got some Poles as well in here. So yeah, looking good. I mean, I say these are Prussians, but I mean, they may not be. They kind of look like they're dressed like Prussians. With like the... Uh, with the funny like lampshades on their heads, so it looks very Prussian like. Uh, but also, what we got in here in cavalry? We've got the Lily White Seventh, and we have King's German Legion Third Hussars. Got artillery sitting up here, six pounders as well, and we have King's German Legion. We've got a lot of a uh, lot of cool units here. It's nice to see it from the British perspective for once, because I don't really know the British units as well as I say I know the French units. I'd say um, maybe that's just because I'm a big fan of the French army in this period. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to see from their perspective, as well as the Prussians. I mean, I kind of knew most of these units anyway. I mean, most of these are just musketeers. Uh, and the Russians kind of the same. they kind of just got line infantry. And they've got a few grenadiers and stuff like that. But nothing, like, they haven't got as much variation as, say, like, the British. Got lots of grenadiers actually here today, which is nice to see. That will be interesting how they deal with their, uh, how the French deal with them. We've got six pounders here setting up. They look like they're dueling with the, uh, the French guns. But yes. That is uh, looking like this, this is going to be a bit of a stalemate here for a little while by the looks of it. But if you're enjoying Sigan 2 w 3 on the channel and would like to join some battles, then feel free to join the Discord. The link's down below in the description as always. And don't forget as well to see more NTW3. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free. 
And uh, make sure you hit that notification bell as well so you know when every Napoleonic battle is coming out. It looks like the British might be about to get into uh, range here. It seems like they might nearly be in range. Don't know, it's hard to say. Yeah, they are in range. They are in fact in range. There you go, King's German Legion opening up and firing onto the French. It looks like we're going to see the uh, the French over here setting up. They're kind of forming like a bit of a... Well, actually, this is this is bad. They just threw these like Swiss infantry in front of their uh, skirmishers. They lost like four or five guys there. Kind of costly. I mean, they are now also sniping Redcoats out, which is nice. Doing a little bit of damage to them. And now the uh, Redcoats spawn. And this is not going to be a ferocity of fire that the, uh, the skirmishers can deal with. They will have to retreat. And it seems like... Seems like this French army here is going to be uh, dealing with uh, defending, like, Gros uh, Widersir, or however you say that name. I'm definitely butchering that name. This village here. And uh, the British got the uh, the challenge of taking it. If they can take it, they can kind of probably flank behind the uh, the other French armies. What cavalry they got here today than the French? Look like they got some, like, sort of, like, German cav. Maybe some, like, Chevaliers or something like that. I don't know. Be careful with their guns, they're firing them as the infantry walks through and they do not want to be uh, taking friendly fire just from uh, shooting their own men. Especially when you've got these uh, sexy grenadiers in the line here, these guys, this beautiful, beautiful. The enemy. And look, there's another huge unit of French here as well. The size of the unit though is not always uh, a good thing, it sometimes will still break, it means that sometimes it's just got uh, lower morale. And it, like, if you look at the HRE units for instance, they have like huge units and huge armies, but it means they have like low morale. They all look ready to go though, these Frenchies. Look at them. And what's break breaking over here? The skirmish is breaking? Oh no, is this the, uh, the guns? Looks like the British went in and rushed in and took out the guns. This And they've also just lost this cavalry. This cavalry's just broken all of a sudden. Yeah, I guess the, the gun crew getting shot up by uh, like the infantry so close. Like They kind of just gave that away. Look at this, the British have got like uh, the Saucy Greens. What a great name. And they're already flanking this French position in. The uh, Prussian army's kind of split in two already. I'm going to refer to them as the Prussian army sometimes, like just the French Prussians. Or should I call them the Franco-Prussians? I don't know. That's a that's a bit of a dicey name, I think, to call them. They'll be arguing over Alsace-Lorraine for a long time. I mean, it's a very multinational army, this, uh, this army here. So it looks like it's got some Prussians here in the army, and then we've got um, some more Swiss, the Poles here. Some like German like, variants here. So, yeah, it's a very multinational army. This unit definitely needs to pull back. I mean, they're running into a Grenadier's little army. And it's the other big French unit. Where's the Grenadier's gone? They're over here. My boys. They look great. They're red shackos. But, yeah, I mean, neither side on this flank really has got like much in the way of cav. I mean, we, we can't see much of the French cav. But that seems to be, uh, certainly the, in the case of the British, they haven't brought like masses. They brought a couple of little like Hussar units and that's it really. I mean it also seems like their infantry is a little bit short, they're quite stretched out. Maybe it's just pretty elite infantry, it must be. They, I mean they got the foot guards, I mean that's an expensive unit. There you go, fighting for king and country. As any good Brit should. I mean, they look like they're absolutely annihilating this, uh, like, Swiss unit here. At least I presume it's Swiss, because they are, like, the only people in the French army that fight in red. Look at this. Guns, crew breaking. Is this again? I think it might be. Look, the gun crew's desperately trying to get back on the guns. they just, like, this is just not going to happen. This is, like, no man's land. You should not be in this gr on this ground. Like, you're just getting shot between, like, your own troops. Look at this. Getting shot by friend and foe. And here you go. British cavalry going in. Dealing with the French cavalry here. Or should I say Germans? Like, look at these Hussars, they look awesome. The Hussar uniforms look amazing. It looks like they're going to break then. Uh, I mean, well, this French unit might then also break the uh, the 7th Hussars. I know, it's kind of rallying. It's, these Hussars are pretty elite by the looks of it. They seem to be able to deal with a lot of damage. I say that, I mean, yeah, they're taking about half casualties. They look elite in the way that they just look amazing. In my eyes, that's elite. If you look absolutely damn far, and they, it looks like they're going to get broken by both, by um, by this French unit here, they're both of them, yeah, just like that. I take it back, they're not elite, I lied. What we got over here? Is this Napoleon himself? Might be, by the looks of it. 
No, no, it won't be. I don't know who this is, but they're all dressed in nice, fine uniforms. So these uh, bodyguard. Maybe be careful they don't just get shot with the foot guards. So that'll be unfortunate. And it looks like over here we've got another one of the French armies coming across. And this is going to be dealing with 1809 Britain rather than 1808. So it looks like 1809 Britain has sent like a small, tiny, sneaky unit over here to support the vein openers. What a name. Some brilliant names for the British, it would seem, in this, uh, <laughs> like in the army. Like back in the day, we named them some, gave them some great names. Look at this, King's German uh, first foot here. Men loyal to the king, loyal to Britain, but from Hanover. Awesome. What uh, what cavalry got over here? I can hear more like charging. Oh, look at this! Prussian cav back up here. It's a little hussar unit again, getting silenced by more dragoons. So this is just a repeat of the fight we've seen earlier. And it'll be a, a same story, I'm pretty sure. You can see you've got like Saxon musketeers setting up. They look like they're going to try and put a volley into the French cav. Uh, I don't know if the uh, Prussian infantry can form square. This could be a risk. That was just close to the cab fight. Oh, the cab may get routed. Look at this! Cavalry getting routed, and then this unit also looks like it may be about to go. They need to get this cab out of here. I don't know, like, how. I don't know about the skill level of these players, but I mean, they're making a few mistakes. Certainly slow and micro in this cab to the front lines. And it's breaking on impact with the, uh, with the Prussian infantry. There you go. What we got here? We got like, uh, we got some like more lances and like Chevrolet and maybe sort of units. Okay. Uh, Chasseur Cheval. Anything really heavy? These look like more dragoons of some sort. No, I would say there's not nothing too heavy in the way of uh, French cab here. It looks like France is already backing off from this Prussian fight. He's not interested at all. But it, already 1809, Britain has got engaged with the uh, the, the French here. It looks like a like a, um, like a guard unit. Not really sure, might be a Spanish guard unit? Spanish or Italian? I'm thinking Italian actually. But they are dressed like uh, like this, this Spanish uh, Spanish French army here, like French versus Spain. So this is kind of a good matchup, I guess, like historically. Breaking units here, this is not good. You can see uh, 1809 Britain already turning the flank of uh, France here, and France is being forced back across this, uh, I guess this is a river. Look at this, Prussia. Well, the Prussian French over here, they're really struggling. I and mean, Kings have a Legion right foot here. In their green jackets, doing pretty good. Remind me of Sharp, they do. Robert Crawford and the uh, light foot here. I remember, I've been reading quite a bit about Robert Crawford recently. Um, it's quite an impressive guy. I'm, I think it's the same guy. There's another Crawford. If it's not the same guy, there's another Crawford that um, was involved in like organizing the guerrillas. That was uh, like fighting for the British as well, so it's uh, he's quite involved in the in the uh, Peninsula campaign, but like that. And here we go. Prussia's now engaging with his French opponent. He seems to be doing a fairly decent amount of damage here. Like, look at the like look at the bodies drop over here for France. It's a lot of them dead. Oh, and they keep going. Uh, as you can see, oh, it looks like we've had a bit of a cab fight over here. I looks like I missed it, but it looks like we've seen like dragoons. Oh no, these are the two dragoons of um, that were fighting the Prussians here earlier. No, so there's been no real fight here. Then Russia's like untouched. It looks like this French army is giving ground um, wherever it is. It's presumably around here where this line infantry unit is. Um, so the French army here is giving ground. I mean, this is not a good sign because that means that Russia can kind of come in and maybe help support um, help support Russia. This looks like it's like the revolutionary France, maybe like 1805 or. 18 or the, like the Italian campaign which would be 1790 or something. I can't remember the dates exactly. About the same time as this army's about is basically the, uh, the Russian foe is. These guys are archaic. Fighting in these uniforms. They're about 100 years old. I wonder if their uniforms are as well. But they do look marvellous fighting in them. Got a little uh, like Portuguese cavalry unit coming up. This looks like it's gonna try and go and sneak for these guns, maybe. Yeah, you can definitely get in there. Look at this. The guns not quite set up, and they're gonna get the crew and they're gonna route them. I think both will route. Yeah, I mean we got the we got the French uh, gun at least, and they actually kind of stabilised. They are probably gonna get routed here though. They are gonna charge straight into the infantry. It's not a bad idea. How many are there? Probably about twelve. Yeah, twelve. Wow. 
causing havoc, but not getting many kills, I imagine, now. Look at this, you know, form is square. Oh my gosh. And they're gonna go in there. Rally the British, there you go. Britain's now forced his way across the, uh, across the river over here. And he's forcing back the French pretty quickly. And the British seem to be just constantly uh, scaring this Prussian army out of out of this village. They don't seem to have made too much progress. We've got a unit from Hindustan here. The 76th Hindustan. The old immortals. These old immortals are gunning down some, uh, some Swiss units here. Look at this guy, look at this officer. He's not even an officer, he's uh, a drummer or something like that. But he's got like a purple bearskin hat going on. I don't know if you saw, guys saw that, it's kind of hard to pick him out now. But big cavalry charge here, this is a Curiosity unit. This is probably like the heaviest cab on the battlefield, possibly. Certainly for the French. And they look like they're going to go for a charge and then push this form square and, I mean, kill a couple of the Curiosities, but they'll be fine. Let's see if the, Ru the Russians are going to be most likely to have any, if they have brought any, but they look like they just brought Dragoons, which is always a smart choice anyway. Um, yeah, it looks like they just brought Dragoons, so yeah, that Curiosity unit may be the heaviest cavalry unit on the battlefield today. I l as you can see already, like, I'll zoom out a little bit, but I'll also get the uh, the main map up, like the mini map up. See, France is kind of having to form a bit of a cre like an inverted crescent, and the, uh, and the Allies are making, obviously, a normal crescent, uh, as they're kind of already sort of getting around the flanks of the French, just trying to really... So this uh, British army over here really push it, uh, pushing this Prussian uh, flank. The Prussians just... What do they send in? Like a little cab over there? Yeah. This guy's form square and routed. The uh, the cav. You need to be careful of their generals right here. It's John Hope here. Earl of Hopeton. Is he lit? Wow, okay. So you're called... You're John Hope and you're called the, the Earl of Hope. It's a very... I don't know. I feel like he may have made that earldom up just for himself. But I mean, I mean, if Britain here, Britain should just be pushing forward into this town. I think trying to flank these Prussians that are trying to re retake the town or at least hold on to it. I don't know why else the Prussians haven't, uh, like the Prussian French army here is not put wherever they are. Here they are. The Grenadiers are the line into that building. Like, they are not taking that building then, the, uh, like into this building here. And then if they take do that, then I don't think they're getting, like, the, uh, British king out there. I guess it's only a 55 out of 55 farm house probably why so the majority of that unit actually stay outside. But there you go, that's a, it would be a good reason. Cavalry push forward here, got some Chester the Cheval, tried it I guess, slow down the, the British, got gunned down instead. Looks like France is pushing forward here in quite a lot of strength. There's a lot of French units here. Before, trying to get around this uh, Saxon line. He's seen a gap between the two Saxon like forces, a uh, Saxon, uh, Prussian forces here. And is probably trying to, uh, like, I don't know, take advantage of this gap. Maybe not a bad idea. So these are Saxon units over here fighting for Prussia, but they are not Saxony, the nation. And Russia, I guess, is trying to take this road so he can get up and down the battlefield nice and quickly. France looks like he's going to maybe fight him for it a little bit. You can see a few shots fired. Got some guard units here of some sort. It's like the uh, console guard or some little chasseurs. What's chasseurs the guard? I don't know. Yeah, quite a lot going on. There's like, fighting everywhere, and you can see there's actually a melee fight going on in here. Britain fighting the French in combat. This is not a fight that Britain can win. Britain kind of sucks in combat. And they're certainly going to suck against the Grenadiers in the line of France. Only really Russia could probably can challenge France in melee combat. And look at this, and they're going into the next unit. It ain't slowing down. These beautiful Grenadiers doing God's work. Killing as many Brits as possible. I mean, that's not really God's work, but still. Loyal Lincoln volunteers. Uh, well, I don't think they volunteer to be stabbed by grenadiers. There you go. I mean, it looks like they're going to do just fine. They're sending more French columns to try and route that unit. And they're deciding that the way that they're going to hold this village is by the bayonet. They haven't got much morale, to be fair. The British, if they can sneak in this unit, might be able to route the French. And they've actually routed the... Uh, Grand is aligned, so that's a big win there for the British. And they've actually routed both of the units. It's a risky business fighting your bayonet. Fighting your bayonets, but there you go, they've gone in. It looks like Britain's occupying this house. There is Bavarians in here. So it looks like Britain's going in to try and fight for it. And France is now coming forward again over here, and a massive shift of cavalry. Kind of going from the center for, against Prussia, and it's now coming over here to face the Spanish army. Oh, well, the, uh, the British Spanish army. I don't think they have actually got a single Spaniard in this army. I think it's just because it's served in Spain. 
This is more likely like this. I think this might be John Moore, uh, so John Moore's uh, like army, the one that fought at Coronia. Looks like there's maybe cavalry movement here going on. Chevrolet is maybe coming forward. Did I? I would have thought most of these Prussian units can't form square. If I remember rightly from the mod, like previous versions of the mod, the early Prussian army kind of a little bit sucky. I mean, it's it's, it's still effective. But it, I do remember it can't, many of them can't form square, if any. Uh, maybe just take grenadier units. But here you go. French cap coming forward, going at full pelt, going for the guns. This is an eight pounder going to be taken out. Oh, I mean, they got shot off. They haven't really killed any French cab. They got in, and they've routed the guns. What are they going to go for now? Probably for the general, yeah. And they're going to get the Prussian general by the looks of it. Yeah, that's a huge, huge loss. They go routed. Not killed. Oh, it's not the general. Sorry, it's the Hussar unit. My bad. Where is the Prussian general? Oh, he's safe here. Friedrich is very safe. Well, actually, I say that. The French cab is very much uh, in range of getting him. How has Prussian not realized this? He's got to be getting got to be getting Friedrich out there. Run for your life. Run to the British. Britain's actually sending over support to help Prussia right now. He's sent over some... Uh, of the 61st Gloucestershire foot. He's going to gun these guys down. Friedrich is getting out of there. He should be okay. I believe in him. Russia still yet to have really a fight. Clearly uh, France really fears Russia. But there you go. Massive uh, fight going on in here. Now we've got cavalry involved. We've got infantry in here. And they're really trying to break through this, uh, this British flank. I guess they're like most worried about this because it's near, it's getting in behind the French. And look at that. The French also... Char bayonet charged here, got routed by the British. And uh, yeah, it's kind of all falling apart for the French on this side. I mean, Britain's not got a large army here now. It's pretty battered. It's uh, battered and seen a lot of action. What's this cab going for? Just gonna go in behind, I guess, and just try and take out this uh, beneficial white goon. Might be able to do it, and it's not. My large goons, in fact, did win. We've got King's Seven Legion coming up for some reason. I don't know. Maybe to just reinforce the point. We hold this left flank. But yeah, the French. I mean, they've got like a lot of cav left over here, but not much infantry. This French army over here really needs to get involved against the Russians. Or at least it needed to shift. Well, look at this. Russia's now shifting troops to help Prussia. Prussia's getting support from all sides. Maybe Prussia was the one to take out as the French. They seem like the weak link. Is that more French cav coming forward? Just some Chasseur Cheval coming forward. I guess they're going to go for, well, something. I presume all the British line infantry can form square, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Britain, maybe Britain's still pretty strong then. Uh, like, even in 9.1. I mean, or maybe just the French players made a lot of mistakes. France has kind of been on the back foot most of this battle. They didn't really get it set up in that town. And they didn't really have a battle plan for who they were go like who was going to take on who. Uh, the uh, the guy that's taking on Russia yet to really engage Russia. He's just kind of watches his, his life going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and watching as his uh, allies kind of get slowly swamped by the other allies. You can see here Russia's now getting a few flanking shots into the side of these uh, French units here. That's line infantry. I think they're generally untouched. Look at this one three one. Oh one three one. They're generally untouched. Because they've not had to fight their own opponent yet. They're now helping to kill other people's opponents. And there you go. They oh, Look at the bodies. That's the flanking fire of Russia there. Helping out. And you can see that... I mean, France is in a real bit of trouble getting encircled here. And you've got... Well, British cavalry, I guess, making sure these uh, French units are gone. And there you go. I mean, the French are going to get in here and... Do some damage to this British unit, which has been caught out trying to charge the guns. I mean, the guns have broken, but so did the British unit. So that's a small victory, I guess. Now I'll be getting this uh, cabin behind, and I'll be going for a rear charge on, this, uh, mus on these musketeers. They can form square, actually. You know what? I take it back. Most of these musketeers can form square as well. Well, not the Saxon ones, but the normal musketeers that can form square. I'm kind of surprised. Like, I thought the whole point of the Prussian Sir. army, like early Prussian army, was Sir. kind of ill-disciplined. Our general is under attack. A general under attack. Russian general getting just shot, I presume, by stray bullets. Konstantin Romanov. He's probably perfectly fine. Or maybe he's getting shot up by the artillery. I don't know. It's 
still dueling over here. But yeah, France is in a lot of trouble here. Like, I mean, these forces really should be supporting their ally here. Like, they push forward to go and bayonet charge. They need to push forward and bayonet charge. Or at least just gun down these units and support the bayonet fight. Yeah, Prussians. They're kind of beating back the French here. I guess the French can only really deal with one bayonet charge at a time. This is just too many. And look at this. The cavalry coming in. Curacity unit. I'll probably take out this, uh, this little line infantry unit and then they may go into the next one. I mean, they're good at just trying to like get involved in as many units as possible because they don't want any of them forming square. There you go, breaking the Prussians there. I'll probably break this one as well. They should really be pushing forward, supporting their cav. Forming square, holding the line. They're just gunning down this uh, this curiosity unit in the flank. Every volley is like hitting a like five or six cavalrymen. Let's have another volley like that. See if any more them, any more drop. Or maybe not. And there you go. The curiosities have been broken. And that, that threat to the flank has been broken. You can see the British forces supporting by firing from into the backs. Yep, yeah, not looking good for the French uh, French right, we'll call it. French right and almost French and French center as well, not looking great. But here you go, look at this. Finally dueling with the Russians. Here we go, Russian cab come into the plane, we've got some dragoons here. And these obviously these uh, guard units here were gonna be able to form a square. That was kind of a kind of a bad decision by the Russians to think that this was even gonna be uh, a success. Because this, I mean this guard unit is gonna be very, very good. Holding uh, and be able to form a square. We've got some uh, lifeguard units back here. These guys might wanna like well, this is a lifeguard unit anyway. Just another line infantry here, they may want to come forward and threaten the threaten the flanks. Like if the uh, they say in square. And they can gun them down, but there's not like they're going to stay in square this time. There's not like they can Well, I should know they can have managed to get it. The Dragoons are going to hit the square. The square wasn't quite formed up, but I, it was nice and formed. And the Dragoons need to get out of there. We really need to bring forward these infantry, like I said. Just bring forward these guys and be able to gun them down. But I think they are facing the other way because the French have managed to get a unit all the way back here. It's like a Laguerre unit. So they are worried about that. But I think just put some cavalry there and keep an eye on them. Who knows? Russia's now kind of like turning the angle a little bit, trying to get a little bit closer. And over here, I mean Prussia and Russia and Britain slowly encasing this remaining French for these remaining French forces here. It looks like the uh, Prussian army is like under French, like the, the uh, French Prussian army here. Still has some uh, grenadiers of the line. I I guess this might be the same unit that's uh, been broken once. I mean, they're still alive. They might want to try and move towards their ally. Morale is not looking good, though. For the French. You can see off in the distance, I mean, these lines. Lines of the French getting thinner and thinner. Cav here, look at this. Looks like it's gonna look like it was gonna flank the Russians, but it's now getting countercharged. I feel like this is a bad mistake by the French. Like they didn't, they moved up and they didn't really have a plan what they were gonna do, and they just allowed them to get charged by by Russian dragoons, and they're gonna lose that fight like, pretty quickly. Yeah, the Russian dragoons just were the, the, the heavier weight class there. Are they sent their general. Wow, they sent their general off, and he got gunned down. What happened here? Oh, now the Russians are getting gunned down. Oh, I think. Oh no, maybe not. I don't know. There might have been some Russians in there, but I think that was mainly French cavalry that's retreating, getting gunned down by both sides. Poor bastards. Look at this, the French got troops all the way out here, more than I thought. They've actually got quite a lot of units out here. Laguerre got carabineers. Yeah, it's a lot of units. I mean, these guys could be useful on the front line. Like, France ain't winning this front line battle. It's 
not a good sign. And now you can see there's a British cab fight, British and French cab fight here. Hussars versus Dragoons. It's kind of an even match. And look at this. The French have been surrounded and murdered. That's a brutal encirclement. Really is. And now the French are going to be silenced by the Russian Dragoons and get surrounded. This will be a, a further French unit to uh, rout on this flank. This is a whole mass already of uh, French units in there that's routing. Yeah, look at this. Russia, I mean, if, if you just duel Russia for long enough, he will start to uh, feel the pain. Like, Russia's armies are not designed for for long, prolonged volley uh, combat. And look at this. Russians coming into the flank. I mean, they definitely did not form square in time. I am kind of feel sorry there for Russia. I feel like he got that. You can see here the Russians being broken. France may be able to hold on for a little bit, but he, he's going to have trouble when the Prussians and the, Rus the rest of the Russians and the British arrive. This is two British armies. Yeah, it's kind of a shame that the French have not been able to uh, able to take advantage of... I mean, the Allied forces will kind of split up a little bit. And maybe he could have tried to snipe one at a time. But who knows? Who knows? I think they, I don't know if they really made too many mistakes. I don't know how good the uh, the players are. I think like some of the like the moves I've seen, I'd say were maybe uh, moves that someone would make if they were a newer player. But it's still it's still good to see. It's been a it's been a fun one certainly. Britain obviously is still really strong and a good counter to France. Certainly, if you can get them nice and close, they they'll gun down units for the French. Uh, and I mean, if the French go to uh, like bayonet charge you. Just put a good volley into them. But uh, yeah, it seems like France is already retreating. He's already had enough. It's a bit of a shame. Hold your ground. We've got Dragoons here. Uh, not Dragoons. Uh, grenadiers here. Their bear skins. Yeah, out of cav, running low on infantry, I think out of cannons as well. France is kind of short on stuff. Why have they got like an infantry unit to sat here? I know, oh, this is a guard unit, that's why. Oh, they're cons it's like the guard, uh, constant guard or the, uh, looks like it's the old guard. Well, if they don't send them in as well, they're not going to be able to turn this one around. I mean, it's unlikely they're going to anyway. I mean, look at that officer unit though. He looks awesome. This is Grey uh, bearskin hat on. That's pretty nice. Uh, and it seems like France is already retreating over here as well. Kind of uh, got a bit of a bloody nose by the looks of it. And he's been sent packing by the Russian lifeguard. But we're just going to fast forward a little bit while we wait for the uh, French to stand and uh, accept their fate. You can see why they're retreating because obviously Britain is uh, flanking. But still, hold your ground, man. Just die. Die with honor. Die like a true Frenchman. I mean, dying like a fruit Frenchman would be waving your white flag and then dying at the age of 80, knowing that you you uh, didn't get killed at 20 by a, bayonet, uh, by a bullet or a bayonet. I'm joking. I'm joking, French people, before you say anything. I'm, many French people have died in combat. I'm surprised that the French have got the most spiritual victories in history. Followed by, followed by Britain and then the US, which is kind of the scary one because USA is like such a young nation in comparison to the other two. And then having the third most major victory. Kind of scary. Britain's now arrived to take on what I think this was like his third or fourth British army taking on. Oh the officer's dead. No rip. Rip in peace. Well, which one's this? This is the uh, 1808. This is the first uh, British army. This is taking on its like a third or fourth army. I don't know if it took on the uh, second French army. So they helped with the third. And now this is the fourth it's taking on. Insane. It's insane. These kills will be really good for the British. 
I don't. I think the pe person with the least amount of kills will be uh, will be Russia, maybe because he's just not seen as much Our action. Men are running, sir. I could hear gunfire back here. What is the fire? What is firing? Is it like this uh, this unit here? I'm not really sure. She's been shot up by some Royal American rifles. I think it might have been. I think it might be that unit there. I'm not really sure. King's German Legion Lightfoot still doing strong in the green jackets. Some of volley! Beautiful. Beautiful. Forming the L shape because they're taking an L. Oh the French today. It is gonna be a it's been a rough fight. Um and it looks like Britain might be sizing himself up for a bayonet charge here. First with guards. I think they fancy the chances. Or maybe just getting really, really close. Uh, yeah, it looks like the French might be going for the bayonet charge instead. Oh, no, both sides. Side, this is the, uh, the way. Both of guard units have sent in some light foot as well. They're sending in even more. Wow, look at this. The wonky donkeys going in. Oh, what a name. Look at this. So much being poured in to one fight. I don't know if this is really worth it. I know it is a guard unit, the French, but I mean better just to gun it down and we'll surround it or just charge other units. What's breaking? Lincoln lo uh, volunteers and the black bob like Crawford's light foot looking like they're going to break. Russia, I mean, should really be going for the bayonet charges. He has the ability. I guess this is what Britain wanted though, just to lure one unit out and then he could just, uh, well, just charge him down. Charge him down with multiple units. Lincoln volunteers have broken. I need to be careful, look at this. They're kind of firing to the back of their own troops a little bit, the King's German Legion. They need to hold the fire. I don't want to do damage to morale. Still fighting on, look at this, it's French or Brazilian. Over here, literally no change, apart from the Russians got more troops here now. Got more grenadiers, more lifeguard by the looks of it. Yeah, they got two lifeguard units here now. Well, I don't think these French are going to be winning anytime soon, but like that, but they have opened, just opened fire. No, they can really see the enemy. They can, like, just see the tops of their hats, possibly, as they come over this slope. Probably not even that. No, they can't even see that, really. If you're a Frenchman, you're kind of in a bit of a bad spot here, in reality. The French have been broken, this, uh, like, chasseur guard here, but they did take down the, uh, the black bomb with them. The first foot guards have survived. And so continues the line battle. I mean, I honestly think just charge the French. Charge the French. Or, let, or you got to at least get Cav in behind, which they should have Cav somewhere. I've seen Cav. Uh, it's got Generals, which is not a good idea to send them. Yeah, look at this. I've got like a little uh, King's German Legion here. I mean, I've seen the Russians got Cav as well. At least I thought I saw it. But yeah, it. it's all the way over there. So, I mean, it should just be flanking around this. Break that, and then this will break very easily. Here we go, Prussia's going to go for the uh, for bayonet charge. Setting forward his Saxon units. They are taking a bit of ca uh, a few casualties here. Here we go. I'm doing what Saxons do best, breaking instantly. Charge the British here as well. Not a bad idea. Huntingtonshire uh, infantry not able to deal with this. Are they trying to come square or something? I don't really know what they're doing. But, I mean, really, the Prussians should be taking advantage and hitting the side of these uh, these French here. The British should be going in for the melee combat. They're breaking a lot of British here right now. 
And the French might turn this around, you never know. I mean, it's not much in the way of Allied troops left. They've got a couple of units left over here, dotted around. They need to get them all up and fighting, really. And they are actually breaking quite a lot of British units here. The Russians obviously have their most healthy army left. Uh, pressure, I think, is now basically out. That's right, gun down those Saxon scum. But yeah, look at this, Britain's in full retreat. Russia should be taking advantage. Should be thinking, right, the French are pushing forward, I need to push forward and take them out. You see that Russia's thinking about this right now, he's sending over his infantry from the east side to back to, like, I guess we can call, like, the center of the battlefield. Yep, yeah, now I mean the Prussians, uh, the Prussians, the Russians just have to kind of wait. See what the French do next. But it looks like the French have already made that decision, and they are going to be retreating. The King's German Legion will not allow that. They're going to slow them down. Orders understood. And these guys go King's German Legion. Hussar, what they're going to go for? I mean, it slows them the uh, the armies down if they form square. Allows the infantry to catch up. I think they're going to try and go for the general. It's a risky business. Look at this riding amongst the infantry, I guess. What are they going for? What are they going for? I mean, all these units are like guard units, most of these units here. Yeah, taking a lot of casualties. Big risk here. And there you go, they broke. See, they were trying to go for the, uh, for the general. Probably was easy ways of doing that. So you need the cavalry back over here if I was Russia. Like, just to slow down these uh, these troops here. But we've got to fast forward. See where uh, the next French line battle is going to take place. It doesn't look like it's going to be here. It looks like France may be thinking about retreating to uh, this village over here. Maybe uh, uh, Golis or Colis. I don't know how you say that. Uh, it looks like Colis. Uh, but anyway, it looks like he's going to retreat to there maybe. Or try and get near to there. Uh, I would imagine that the Allies will catch him before he gets there. I mean, the Cav is very, very close already. These goons uh, breathing down the necks of the, uh, the French. And the Russians not too far behind with their infantry. So, uh, yeah. And the, and the British are still in this. They've still got a few uni units aligned. Uh, about, I mean, what we've got King's German Legion, Nottinghamshire, Fort Warwickshire, and East Kent. So, yeah, not too bad on, uh, on like, a few troops left. And hopefully, hopefully the... Uh, well, I say hopefully the Russians can win this one. I'd like to see the French turn it around. But, I mean, I feel like the Allies kind of deserve it. The French, I don't think, played especially well. So, I feel like the Allies deserve this victory a bit more than the uh, than the French do. But here we go. Looks like they're going to slow down now and prepare for uh, the Russian Cav. I mean, this unit here surely cannot form square just because of the sheer amount of men left in it. But we'll find out. It is now going to get charged. Here we go. Charged by the Russian Dragoons. And yet, yeah, it's going to receive the charge and get broken. So that's one less French unit to deal with. They're going to form a square here, slow down this unit. And the Dragoons broke. That is a shame. They need to be careful that they don't lose all these Dragoons. I mean, they are very, very handy. They could have slowed down the enemy. They kind of want to maybe get them in front of the uh, the French army and try and push the French army back towards the uh, the Russian infantry. But we will see. Anyway, we'll fast forward again. I wonder if whether France is just going for the uh, for the LTC to try and like um, just get like a victory. I mean, there's not even any points on it. So there's no, well, actually this one here, mocker has got three points on it. And this one's got three, two. This one doesn't have any points on it. So there's just a couple of points. So they've got to go quite away if they want to try and get any points. And looks like we're going to see a, a light dragoon over here. Maybe try and slow down the French army. At least try and form, make it form square. Not a bad idea. I mean, they need to get on this road here, the British. And then they can just kind of run up and down the road wherever they need to go. So that's mm, the French. I thought we were maybe going to use the road, but nope, not interested. 
They're getting very, very close to the British, though, to slowing down the French. And here we go. This is where the British, uh, the French, sorry, are going to hold. On the road itself. Well. It looks to be the case, anyway. Where's that? Oh, the Light Dragoon is just in behind. There's not much way they can stop that. And the General's dismounted. Oh, An interesting decision. Here we go. Looks like we're about to see the last stand of the French. Because finally, I mean, they've done the Allies have done what I said they should have done. Is, even if it's a tiny little unit like this, this little like, oh no, they shouldn't be going in. They should not be going in. Light Dragoons are just going to be able to slow down the French because they can't Glorious just march out the cavalry. Up. There you go. Look at that. That got like Dragoon just wasted. They should have just waited. But they have also just shot their own general a little bit. I don't think they killed any of his uh, unit, but they did just form square around him, shoot probably through him. There you go. Now the French have an escape route again if they need to. The Russians really need to get some cav and get this side of the French army just to surround them. And then they're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. I don't even think they beat the French over here. I think these guys might still be in this building. If that is the case, it's very annoying for the Allies. They've got to march all the way back over there. There we go. The Tsar's men marching forward. And they are trying to get that cavalry in behind, though it looks like, again, it looks like he's charging a... No, it's not a guard unit, actually. Might be able to take that unit out. And it looks like it will. They're not forming square, or they are, but it's very, very late. That is, surely they did not form square in time. I feel hard there. That's a hard, that's a harsh one there for the, uh, for the, for the Russians. They're gonna get shot and broken here. Well, maybe not. Can the Russians gun this unit down? It's gotta stay in square. What's breaking here? Oh, it's not line infantry. Okay. The general seems very safe. Yeah, they just need to get carrying behind it because the uh, French right now cannot afford to put an infantry unit to defend the general and rear charge these units. That's all they should be doing. Shouldn't be trying to flank. Be trying to rear charge these units. But I don't think France is going to hold. It's just a matter of not if, but when. And here we go. Russian cab coming into the back. And they're not forming square this time with the French. And they are broken. The next one has formed square, like the guards. He's gone for the general, which is a smart move. Take this general out, kill him, and they'll break the army. The Russian cabs. Oh no, look at this, the general's charging the cab. He's what a madman. Built different. Oh no, run him down now, run him down. <laughs> That's brutal. That is brutal. I'll break that general now. Yep, he's broken. Our men are running. And the French army is also broken there. That is an entire French army gone. So yeah, well done to Russia. They've managed to take out the main French army. I don't know if there's still an army over here. Um let's just fast forward and we'll find out. No, there is not. The French must have got taken out over there at some point. But there you go. A great victory there for Richard the Lionheart, who sent this one in, playing as Russia. Um, obviously, well done as well to the British armies, both active and rucksack. Did a very, very good job uh, playing as, um, as the British. And I felt like they did a lot of heavy work there. And you can see from the kills, I mean, like the Br active got the most kills, doing 1,500 and uh, rucksack doing pretty well as well, bringing in uh, 1,000 kills. The smallest army actually on the battlefield. Um, but yeah, also well done as well to Duke Barbaros, doing uh, really well as Prussia. Prussia kind of like underestimated a little bit, I think that, uh, that 1806 army, but it's still pretty good. And then we have Wood here, Admiral Adam, Sonny Shit, and Greta Berger. Greta Berg, what a name, uh, playing as uh, as the French. So we have an 18, we had an 1815, an 1805, an 1809, and an 1812. Well, as I kind of thought, um, yeah, it's like the Russian North, uh, Russian North army, I guess. Yeah, this must be, um... This would be, oh, I can't remember his name now. But yeah, the, the, the Prussian Corps that was like serving in the north, whose name is now escaping me. Um, I'm sure someone will remind me. Um, oh, York, there you go. York's uh, uh, Corps, I imagine, was like, what well, then changed sides. But yeah, it was a really, really fun one. We'll quickly check out some of the unit stats uh, for uh, Richard Lionheart, who's playing as the Russians. His Dragoons getting 155 kills. Lion Infantry getting 138. 
Um, yeah, nothing too insane. Russia did kind of join the, the party late, but yeah, he got some pretty decent kills. Um, but there you go, guys. If you enjoyed this Enter GW3 battle, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And as always, feel free to join the Discord. Link in down below in the description. And until next time, I will see you in the next Napoleonic battle. Bye for now.